Stephen here, the cashier here at Papa Pond. Um, thank you for being here and being part of our video. He's going to give us a little quick tour of the kitchen, the behind the scene in Papa Pond. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what's going on in here? Yeah, so uh, in here we have uh, most of our desserts. So sure, from do. the other side you can see the display, so we have okay. everything displayed. And then we have here um, a special Egyptian drink called okay. iced hibiscus. Okay. And here we have our hot drinks like coffee and we make a mint tea as well from here. We get our coffee locally. Um, so we get it from Cervantes Coffee in Springfield. Okay, right. what else do we have over here? Here we have like the salad bar. So this is where um, the main prep is. So after they have gotten the main course, then they'll add the salad or a side. Here's like oh, just the garnish stuff. Stuff we put like a little bit of cilantro and stuff on top. And then if you want to walk into the kitchen, so this is our main grill. So um, all the food is like half cooked. So when it's ordered, we'll cook it. We cook it here, okay. so like it gets that nice uh, finish. That is about it. because I don't see a lot of food, like ready-made food that are laying yeah. around. So you're definitely people ordering and then you're making it right away. That's correct. Um, so that's awesome. Is there something you recommend us to order? Because we've never really, we've had a lot of Middle Eastern food. You know, there's a lot of Middle Eastern restaurants out there. So is there something that is typical to, to Egyptians? Yeah, so a really big Egyptian dish yeah. is um, lamb fatta. Lamb fatta? So the lamb fatta is uh, like just a braised chunk of lamb. And that is actually not cooked until it's ordered. So we'll cook it right in this thing right here. Oh, this is where you cook the lamb fatta. Yeah, so that has a like crispy golden, and then the meat actually just falls off the bone. Oh, wow. And that's actually on a bed of rice with like a garlicky tomato sauce that is also homemade. The sauce is right over here. Actually. Okay, a homemade yeah. tomato sauce. That's awesome. Yeah, so everything is homemade. There's okay. nothing canned or processed. Okay. And everything's awesome. made fresh daily. That's awesome. So we're definitely going to get that. Thank you so much, yeah, Steven, course. for your time and for this little tour. I think we're ready to order. Awesome. Got the iced hibiscus tea to start with. This is one of the most common drinks here, and I see that a lot of people order this as well. And one thing to point out is that this herbal, they got it directly from Egypt, so it's not from here, not like Starbucks. Let me take my first sip. Mm. It's very fruity, a little bit sour, it's not super sweet. It's almost like pomegranate slash cranberry juice, but it's a herbal tea and I heard that it's really healthy and it's a very common Egyptian drink. Definitely try this out if you get to come here. Mm, very refreshing, I love it. The first dish we got here is the kosher bowl. It is a very typically eaten food in Egypt. It has rice on the bottom and then mixed with macaroni and also lentils and some caramelized onion as well as some of um, their homemade spicy tomato sauce. We also have three pieces of tiny uh, falafels on the side. These are optional. And so if you order the kosher bowl without them, it's fine too. They can be eaten alone. Um, but we added three pieces of their falafel. Oh, look at it. Oh, it has a lot of lentils in it. It feels so healthy already. Mmm. Mm. Mm. A lot of beans. Mm, that's right, there's chickpeas in here too. Mm, it's so good. It feels very healthy because Egyptian grain rice and then has a lot of beans. It's not salty, it just feels very hearty and it's a very filling dish. After pouring a little bit of that smashed tomato sauce in it and mix it up with the rice and macaroni, let's try this out. Look at that. Mm. Mm. The sauce is very tomatoey. Mm. Nice and sweet and garlicky as well. Just mix this dish originally, it already tastes really good, but it was more on the dry side. Tomato sauce in it, it just makes it more moist, more tomatoey. Okay, it's time to add a little of that green spicy sauce in here. This is the original Egyptian eating way. So originally it should be a spicy tomato kind of sauce, um, but they took it out on the side in case some people can't handle spiciness. So I just mixed a little bit of that jalapeno green sauce in. It's hot. Oh, it's very hot. <laughs> it's good though. It just added more excitement to it. It's pretty spicy. If you can't handle spiciness, don't put that much sauce in it. Here is Fafa Pot. So how can we come to Fafa Pot and not try their Fafa Bean Falafel? So this is basically a crushed uh, Fafa Beans and then they fried it, uh, make it in a circle shape like this. Wow, it's very crispy on the outside and inside. Well, this is really, it's really stuffed and um, it has like green onions inside too. I think it's very flavorful. I love this. Mm. Mm. Ooh, iced mint.
mint lemonade. Look at that bubble on top. I've had a lot of lemonades, but I don't think I have had one that has uh, mint in it. Mm. Oh, very minty and pretty sour, which is good because it doesn't have a lot of added sugar to it. I love this. This is super refreshing. Definitely more sour than the hibiscus tea. But yeah, this is really good. And I think these two drinks are the most popular drinks here. I see that a lot of people order. Kids love them. Adults love them. This is a very nice summery drink. The second dish we got here is the lamb vata. It's a very typically in dish in Egypt as well. And it's basically raised lamb shank put on top of a bed of Egyptian whole grain rice and vermicelli noodles. And inside there's some uh, tomato-y sauce in between. And then this also comes with a side of crispy pita bread. The lamb here looks really tender. I can't wait to just dig in. Oh, I just, oh, this is ball of the bone tender. Look at this. I didn't even have to use my knife at all. I just used my fork to sort of fork out the lamb. And it just comes right off of the bone. Look at this. This dish has actually some lamb juice in it to just sort of add an extra lamb uh, flavor to the lamb dish. Mm. Oh my gosh, the lamb is so tender. The lamb meat is pretty strong flavor, but it goes really well with the tomato sauce. I love it. I, love, I just love how tender this is. And because their rice is mixed with vermicelli noodles, it just sort of added an extra texture to this dish. Mm. Very special. Mm, I'm sure my husband's gonna love the rice with together with this uh, spicy green jalapeno sauce. I'm just gonna mix it in and try it out. Mm. Very flavorful. Mm, it goes so well with me. I just, we just love meat that has some spiciness to it. Mm -hmm. This side pita bread, I'm just gonna dip it in my tomato garlic sauce and just, just try this out. Mm. That tomato sauce is very, really well done. I think we can live in Egypt. <laughs> we have the owner of Baba Pa Dina here next to me and to just sort of tell us a little bit about the background of the restaurant. Sure, um, I started Baba Pa food truck on August 2013. Wow, you remember the month? <laughs> yes, because that was a huge, like, uh, career shifting for me from uh, office work to mm. food truck and working on the street. The idea came for the food truck. Um, I was on a mission trip in Kenya. I started to think what is the next step, and I was searching online, and I find it pop up this uh, food truck train that's going on in DC. And uh, I started that first two years I was putting between 12 to 15 hours a day between preparation because at that time I had only one employee because I cannot hire. Right, you couldn't afford when you started, yeah, of course. Then we gained a lot of followers yeah. and they always telling me, Dina, we wish if you have a restaurant so we can get our family at night here. Uh, right, that's right. Food truck also, I have to, to shut down during winter right. because it's very challenging to uh, work during winter. And I guess less people eat outside when it's so cold Exactly. Too. I try to phase down from uh, being seasonal in this career to a full-time career. Um, and the idea of the restaurant came and we started. Yeah, no, it's amazing. Yeah. And it's a very like cozy little restaurant. And I saw a lot of people earlier. Yeah. And you it seems like you kind of know almost everybody here. And you try to greet everybody. That's yeah, this nice. is this is something that uh, I always prayed about it in this restaurant yeah. that I want everyone to come not only to feed his stomach but mm. also to feel welcome to feel home away yeah. from home. Yeah, I love to, to read behind the scenes, so right. that's why I try like everyone to come here to feel it's his own restaurant, right? And yeah. connect with your customers exactly. and people and, yeah. and make them feel at home and comfortable. Yes. Yeah, that's, yes. that's amazing. No, I yes. think you're achieving that. Yeah. And the second question we have for you, and we saw that you're partnering with a non-profit organization helping some uh, children that are in need in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that partnership with that organization? Sure. Um, I used to work with Coptic Orphans. Uh, it's a non-profit that's focusing in education for the girls in Egypt. Okay. Uh, and I was director of donor relations there, which I have seen firsthand how God used this organization to transform lives in Egypt. Uh, Egypt is different than here. You have to be from 
uh, a wealthy family and you have connection to be able to climb the ladder. Okay. When I moved here, I start to realize how many opportunities are here for the one who wants to succeed, right. who wants to study. Like it's always a choice for people to be successful or not. Mm. In Egypt, it is not a choice. It is forced on them to be to stay where they are. Right. So I see with Coptic orphans what they are doing with their children. And first three years, we were sponsoring girls mm. in Egypt until they finish their college. Okay. Uh, now, we are not sponsoring kids because I am in the second startup. We were established, but now I have a lot of expenses. Right. So all the support that I'm doing now with them is promoting their cause okay. until we we'll break even, okay. and then we will start again to, to support them financially. College, got it. That's a wonderful story, and you do have a good heart. <laughs> I can say you're not yeah. just a very business-oriented person, because sometimes I mean, it is a business. I mean, when it is you run a, a restaurant, it's a business. But yeah. then at the same time, you know, be able to pay your bills. At the same time, you're doing something good for people who are in need. So that is a amazing and a very touching story. Yes. This, is, this is amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's a very, very nice restaurant. The food, of course, is great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Hey, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having us, and thank you for coming. No, we love it here. So um, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Dina just brought us this hot mint tea to finish off our meal today on a full uh, Sunday afternoon and we just added a little bit of brown sugar to our tea that came on the side so I'm gonna take my first sip. It's just so good. It's nice and hot. It's just it feels so soothing after our lamb and carb and then I know outside it's pretty cold right now on this fall day and look at the decoration here they're ready for Christmas. It feels so good. I wish outside is snowing right now. It would have been a perfect scene. <laughs> Together with the tea, she brought us some almond cookies. It's homemade. Everything's homemade here. Nothing store bought. Mm. Mm. The cookie is very, very soft. Oh, I like the almond flavor in there. It's not super sweet. It goes so well with this tea. Seriously, I'm surprised. This cookie is so good. Oh my god. <laughs> mm. It's so like powdery. The cookie crust. Oh, it's so good. Mm. It totally just perfected our meal. So good. It was an awesome first time Egyptian cuisine experience here at Sasa Pot. Very nice owner, Dina, and then very nice and friendly staff here as well. I'm so glad we got to talk to the owner, talk to their, some of their staff members, and got to see behind the scene of the kitchen as well. So if you've never had Egyptian food, make sure you check this place out here in Falls Church, Virginia, Fafa Pot. If you enjoyed our video today, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to our channel for more taste of the world cuisine in the US. Also, don't forget to check out Fafa Pot's website for their food truck hours and see when and where they are um, having their food at their food truck. So until the next video, stay happy, eat yummy. I'm Naomi. See you on the next video. Bye.